Hello, everyone. Uh, today we are talking about rotation around a fixed axis. And the phrase fixed axis um, it's just a way of saying um, the axis and hence the body center of mass is not in motion, so it's not moving. So when you see that phrase fixed axis or something similar, um, interpret it as the center of mass not moving. Okay. So let's talk about how that plays in to our discussion of torque and angular momentum. So our fundamental principle is the sum of the torques about an axis is equal to the time rate of change of the total angular momentum. And we defined L total as equaling L center of mass plus um, this term defined as spin, where um, spin is just equal to I omega, and it's omega which carries the vector. A brief word to all of you chemistry fans out there. When you write the orbital numbers for... Um, an electron, apart from the principal energy level, notice the next set come in as an angular momentum term and the spin of the electrons. Um, no, as well as um, the rotation around the uh, z-axis. So, in a way, you've seen this before in chemistry this expression of L, L center of mass, and the spin around that center of mass. So let's take the fixed axis condition, and because the body center of mass is not moving, this term here will go to zero. So, no center of mass motion means no center of mass um, momentum, so no center of mass angular momentum. This fixed state, fixed axis state, allows us then to sum the torques about the rotation axis to get d dt of the spin and let's make the next substitution in that d dt of the spin is i omega well omega is the angular speed the moment of inertia um does not change for us. We have uh, the condition of a rigid body, so an object that's not going to change shape. So if it's not changing shape, its moment of inertia is not changing. So we can do then I dt of omega, which is simply I angular acceleration. <clears throat> so our fixed axis equation is simply summing up all of the torques around the axis as a vector is going to equal I alpha, which is a vector, 
and everything is using that same axis of rotation. <clears throat> okay, so let's do a um, moderately quick example to talk about how all this comes into to work. And the simplest example that I can think of is one torque. So let's take a wheel to make sure it's solid. Jeez, feels like I'm taking the ACT. Okay, we take a wheel, make sure it's solid. Probably should use a different color. But then we're going to um, from the ceiling let's attach some kind of an axis to it. And we will then pull with a rope. So this is our um, rope, which has a tension of twelve newtons. Let's give the mass of the wheel, or the disc, or whatever you want to think about it, as being three kilograms. And the radius of this wheel will make kind of small, less than a foot, so 25 centimeters. And since we're talking about the wheel, we know it has a moment of inertia. It's a solid wheel, so you can check your charts, and that's one half m r squared for the moment of inertia, which we might as well spend a moment and compute. So one half of three kilograms, point two five meters squared will give us 9.375 times 10 to the minus 2. And our units are kilograms meters squared for I, because I always looks like mass times um, a distance squared. So moment of initial always will have units of mass, kilograms times that distance, meters squared. Squared. <laughs> okay. So this force is going to make the wheel spin. Uh, so... Let's do it in green. As this axis goes down, we'll start picking up an omega in that direction. And similarly, we'll pick up an angular acceleration in that same direction as we pull down. So, moving on, um, back to our fundamental principle, sum of the torque about an axis is equal to I alpha. And just for grins, um, let's go ahead and find the time uh, to omega equals 24, I don't know why I elevated that, uh, radians per second. So, all right. So, 
we know this object has to be accelerating um, when we grab our pink sheet. Um, is there a collision? No. Is there ro a rotation of a volume? Yes. So now we're over into the dotted. Is there a time dependency? Yes. Are there initial and final picks? No. And that leads us to um, the fundamental equation, which we reduced to this. So when we follow the pink sheet, we wind up with this as a place to start. Okay, uh, so we're summing torques. So with torques, what we do is Let me, I'll keep it purple. What we do with torques is we make a table of the forces that are acting. We're going to do the cross product. I call it cross, but it's technically calculating the full torque. And then we're going to have a column which allows us to sum up all of those torques. So again, the idea of cross is the definition of torque. So torque is defined as a vector to be R cross F. So what I'm concentrating on with the cross product is to get the unit vectors correct with R and F. And that we make sure it works because um, we have our unit vector wheel. Okay, you can go away now. You can go away too. So again, our wheel is made by putting X at the top, then Y, then Z. And we jump from one unit vector, and we rotate around to a unit vector, rotate around to the unit vector. And that's our cross product wheel. Alrighty, let's get our purple back. Draw the line. And we talk about the forces now acting on this wheel. Well, one force that's clean is the tension force. And the other force you may have forgotten about is the um, force normal from the um, rigging and the force of gravity of the wheel. So we do the tension first, and the cross product says you take the R, which in our case is, um, I'm just going to write it as R for now, and you multiply it by the force, which is going to be our uh, tension, and then we pull out the vectors of both of those. So R is pointed in the helps if we have defined our vector coordinates, x and y. Um, so that means RT is going to be found with R is in the plus x direction. And our tension, however, is in the minus y hat direction. And what we do with that minus sign is we pull it out in front because that minus sign is really negative 1. So I can put it anywhere I want to in this resultant. Um, so the torque here now is going to be found by taking, starting it, x hat going around and grabbing y hat and that will lead us to the answer we're looking for z 
So I'm going to have negative RT Z hat. Okay, the normal force, which in our case is acting at the location of the axis, is just zero. So the yellow apparatus holding up the wheel, acting at the um, center to hold the axis, has zero distance between itself and the axis of rotation. So again, R is the distance between the axis of rotation and where the force acts. So zero times anything. We don't have to do any work here. That's just zero. Likewise, we're going to see the same thing from the force of gravity. We're rotating the wheel around the center of mass. The center of mass is equal to the center of, of gravity. So just a quick aside, no, we don't forget that. Back in black. Oh, son of a... Okay, anyway, so we have um, the reminder that the R center of mass is also the location of the uh, center of gravity. So again, we're going to get a zero for the distance times the force of gravity, and we're going to get a zero down here. Summing all of our torques, so the sum of all of our torques now is just equal to minus RT in the Z hat direction. And I want to stay on this uh, board just so I can uh, make an important point, a public service announcement. The sum of the torques about an axis as a vector is equal to I alpha as a vector. So... When we come in with RT negative Z hat, we know that the alpha then has to be in the negative Z hat direction as well. So what does the negative Z hat direction mean? Negative z hat means that um, if you take a look at alpha, it is going clockwise. So clockwise, is um, negative z hat, and counter. clockwise is going to be plus z hat. So you can envision the um, rotational kinematic variables, omega, alpha, and so forth, as just being in the, uh, kind of coming out of the page, the third dimension to this problem. So let's round up, uh, let's, let's get the... Uh, our torques are all solved for. So the sum of our torques is just minus RT in the Z hat direction. That has to equal I times alpha. Okay. Um, that means that um, we have a negative alpha as well in the Z hat direction. So, as that torque spins downward, um, the wheel has to correspondingly spin with it, with the negative z.
if we do a quick uh, kinematic thing, um, we know that the change in omega over a given time period just defines for us the angular acceleration. Or, in a more familiar way, velocity angular final is equal to velocity angular initial plus alpha t. All right. So when we look back to the black side of our calculations, we can solve for alpha. So we'd wind up with um, alpha equals r times the tension over i. This does not give us time. But frequently when we're asked to get time, the kinematic expressions are always there to help us. So let's solve for alpha. It's equal to the radius, 0.25, multiplied by the tension, uh, 12 newtons. Divided by our moment of inertia, Nine point three seven five kilograms um, meters squared, and I guess I should squeeze in my meters. So numerically, I'm going to get um, clear. Can my calculator work? Uh, point two five times twelve divided by 9.375 to the negative 2. And this alpha then gets me um, a value of 32 um, meters The Newton is kilogram meter second squared, and my denominator is from the moment of inertia kilograms meters squared. So we can see that the kilograms here and the kilograms here are above and below, and I have m squared above leaving me just second squared, which is what we would anticipate for an angular acceleration. Basically, one over second squared, where that one is, is radians, but we're getting ourselves, um, remember, a radians a non-unit unit. So we have alpha in the right terms. Uh, let's climb over and um, into our kinematic expression now. And we get um, omega final equals omega initial plus alpha t. You'll recall that um, we didn't explicitly say it, but we're spinning the wheel up by this tension force. And we wanted to find... the time to get omega to 24 radians per second. So that tells us we know omega final is um, 24 radians per second. And to assume that we didn't have an initial speed plus our alpha 32 radians 
of a second squared multiplied by time, which will be in seconds, shows that both sides of the equation have the same units. So our time then is simply uh, 24 over 32, 24 radians per second divided by 32 radians per second squared, invert and multiply gives us units of seconds. So 24 divided by 32 ought to be three quarters, yeah. Um, so it takes three quarters of a second to spin this wheel up to speed. The time that it took wasn't important. The point of this exercise was to show you how to, um, let me get a highlighter that's not going to be too bright. The point of this exercise was um, that we had a new uh, re reduction of our full force, our full torque angular momentum relationship. And that um, while we're reviewing, this sort of looks like summing of all the forces equaling mass and acceleration. That's the same form. Um, so that may help you um, process it. It never really helped me. Um, so we have this new form of what happens when we sum the torques. We wanted to then do the summation of the torques. And that's really done by listing all of your forces to make sure you don't forget any, which have to be acting, so that you can then add up all of the torques in the process. Notice the table is nice because it gives you um, a chance to do the cross products just as cross products and not to get tied up with the value of R and the value of T. Uh, you can just do the cross product using our wheel. So really this problem is telling us that when you apply a torque in the negative Y direction, you produce um, a clockwise rotation and clockwise is negative, counterclockwise is positive. So when we sum all of our torques and apply the direction of the alpha, we'd be fine. Okay, one legitimate question is, I made arguments for why alpha was in the negative z. What if that what if I didn't know that? Well, it's going to come out in the wash because you do know the torque is RT um, Z hat and it's negative. So even if you had originally made this term positive, your alpha term would have come out to be negative and... Um, that is um, okay, but it's um, really inconsistent with the fundamental principle that the sum of the forces determines the angular acceleration. So when you saw that negative T only, and it had a negative alpha, um, just multiply both sides by negative 1 and start working in Z hat. All right, um, I hope you found this video useful. Um, as always, I have office hours um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 2 to 4. Oh, stay safe, stay healthy.